Hello everyone out there in Twitch TV land. Welcome to yet another Waystone Games live stream. I am Brad Pluto Ramey, the Assistant Community Manager here at Waystone Games, joined by Lead Shaper Designer with his, of course, Starbucks Star plug mug. Starbucks mug. <laughs> you see what it's drinking? I'm trying to actively remedy this because people make fun of me for the Starbucks, mm -hmm. uh, Starbucks hype that I'm continually selling yeah. on stream, but soon... I'll have a special mug. We'll have a very special custom, custom arted mug. Yes, it's Which true. we're very excited about. That's uh, the dream. I'll Dibs. try to put the, I'll try to drink it like this so I get that face in there. Instead. I don't even know what that logo is. Uh, but the guy next to me with the uh, gorgeous hair and the amazing mug is Dan <coughs> Dibs Gibson, our lead shaper designer here at Waystone Games. Hello. And usually, for the most part, whenever you guys see him on a stream on a Monday at 11 a.m., or a little bit later, sorry right. about that, guys, uh, it usually means a new shaper. Which is uh, something that has just been come to know. But not come today. To not today. No, we're here to talk about life. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this is this is the Waystone <laughs> counseling session uh, for you guys. No, of course, we're here for Shaper Reveal. There's so much yep. hype. Um, we're super excited to talk about new Shaper. I'm always super excited to do these reveals because it's like revealing new content is just a good thing. And everyone gets super excited about right. it. The chat's already going. Uh, we started hyping it up over the weekend. We actually did something new. Uh, we shared this Shapers kit with our Team Waystone streamers, and uh, they got super hyped about it. They started talking to us about it and, uh, so good. and spreading the word with you guys, but not too specific. They didn't right. give away any of the kit or anything, but we wanted to use them to uh, celebrate uh, and, and share the hype and also give them a little a little nugget of, of awesome information for just being part of Team Was that, was that like Tulsa on Reddit who was like, oh, look what I know. The <laughs> his hook, his, hook, uh, or his, uh, his ult is going to be so playmaking and amazing. Right. You know? um, and uh, <clears throat> it's going to be really fun. So without further ado, I've got my notebook here. See, i got Ferris on the front of my notebook, drawn by Big Friday Will Corner. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about this. What is he? <laughs> oh, wait. Do we want to talk about the... The front end, the, the lore thing, or not? That we do that afterwards. Afterwards. Oh, okay. Afterwards. Okay. Okay. Whoa, okay. whoa! We really jumped the jump the gun. Uh, okay. Oh, Alrighty. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about uh, Basco. Let's talk about Basco. You guys know about him. Yeah. So the first thing uh, we were trying to fill a specific uh, story niche. Right. Right. So generally, when we kick off these things, we have something w with the the concept artists. We have something to go off of. Um, sometimes it's it's brought to us by them. Sometimes it's brought to us by us. You know, like Ashabel was. You know, that's all like Kendra. She wanted to draw that character, but um, for Basco in particular, we had a particular, as you said, story hole to fill. Uh, we knew we wanted a character from the West for uh, for this. Um, for this character, as you guys, if you read the story, you guys know that he's from the West. Um, we already had one in this group from the South, uh, which was Ashabal. We had one that planned from the East. We had one planned from the North that actually got cut. Um, but we were like, let's make sure we get one from the West. Uh, and we knew we wanted him to be a bruiser as well because it had been a little while since we'd done a bruiser. But the thing that was interesting about Basco was that we knew we wanted someone from a different social group from the West because a lot of the people that we have from the West like come from essentially nobility like you know it's like Duke Enzranzi's daughter and his like personal assistants and his personal bodyguard <laughs> right even if you know Michaela and, and Petrus are, are like high class citizens and mm -hmm. Varian's not he's he's low class but he's been brought up because he's a shaper now he's like in Enzranzi's pocket and he's like completely loyal to him because of the money and we have characters like Vex who was originally in the, s in the West but he like you know, escaped and we have Desecrator who was like still nobility in the West but he's the Desecrator now <laughs> um, the desk right. right. But what we wanted was a character who's from low class and mm -hmm. relates to low class, unlike Varian. So this is really, really appropriate for where we are in the comic right now. If you read Friday's comic, you saw Duke Enzrani was like, dear God, like what if a disgruntled, you know, factory worker gets this ability? Like what will happen? And Petrus was like, yeah, he could, he could kill a hundred guards. Could, it, could, right? it would be bad. And this is exactly what we wanted. We were like, let's go for that. Like we want that person who's like low born in a crappy place in life, but like has suddenly become a superhero because of yep. his, his shape of powers and bonding with a spirit. I really love the, uh, the, for one, the, the lore that right. Chris wrote, yep. uh, knuckled was fantastic. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really like was, it showed that Basco was this kind of like thug, you know. He right. he was this kind he's, of. He's the muscle. He's the, he is the muscle, literally, and right. uh, he he may have cut off some dude's finger, which was pretty cool. Right, that's the thing. Whenever people do like a something bad against uh, against the, the the mob, essentially, mm -hmm. they get one of their knuckles removed and Basco yeah. I believe is one of the only people who has all of his knuckles <laughs> <laughs> thankfully thankfully right uh, but yeah I really like the you know it, the the lore beat kind of that happened of like yeah, it was Anzirani very, it was very calculated very like you right. know Anzirani is like oh my god what if this happened and right. then Monday we're like it's yeah. happening it's happening Basco is happening yep um, so uh, one of the things that is uh, um, was interesting is 
not only is he from the West and kind of from the slums, but they did also mention, I listened to his lore too. They were like, oh, he was kind of from right. the West. For, not really the slums per se, but he wasn't the nobility. He, he but was once he super was low, able right. to shape, he was like, boom. Right. Like noble and amazing. Like they right? said, that's the only thing that can get you out of the slums and make you untouchable because they can't take it away from you. If you if you like had some object, they would just kill yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, you have a gun? <laughs> right. No, you don't. Right. But, but Idolus had, you know, incredible uh, shaping power and shaping potential so he kind of elevated out and they're all kind of they're like he's one, he's one of us is he still you know yeah. like yeah kind of a thing and uh, the, the last thing about you know just kind of Basco's um, background is that he is essentially Anzirani's worst nightmare he right? absolutely is he, he cannot be bought with money right this is all for his own just everyone he know ha- pretty much has died due to like Meridia's yeah. wealth and greed and, and like Anzirani represents exactly that so it's just he is he is absolutely a source nightmare. And now he has his power and uh and we'll see what happens with it. So I mean yeah. I think I think that kind of brings us to yeah. to the actual piece of art that uh, I hope you guys are excited for. Yeah, let's so do it. let's pull up that render and, and that uh that that's voice sweet, actor. sweet VO. So there's gonna be a little bit of a uh, of a delay uh between these two VO lines, but I think they're both very good. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. here you guys, without without further ado, uh we got Basco, the enforcer. Our cause is just they better give up now. Who's with me? Someone shank this ass. <laughs> I, I like I like that yes, second line. Right. Oh, it's fantastic. Just, just add that in. Um, so Basco the Enforcer. I know obviously some of you guys got a little tease of this image uh, over the weekend, but uh, this is it in all of its glory. Basco the Enforcer, uh, an amazing model, obviously by uh, by our very own Kevin Gishado Lee. Right. Uh, fantastic. This whenever I saw him working on this pose specifically, I would walk up to his desk and be like. That's good. Yeah. That's a good pose. When he first came into game, and he actually came in really early with, like, even just early texture, we were like, oh, like, yeah. he looks so <laughs> cool. Yeah. What he, a badass. He is amazing. This is uh, uh, one of the best things to kind of s- come forth from Boxman. It's it's so funny to go to that transition. We've talked about Boxman before. Right. To go from Boxman to model is always, like, a real amazing kind of jarring experience. And when Enforcer came in, I was like, Kevin, you've done it. It yeah. looks so good. A lot of times, like, an ability or, you know, until it has the actual animation, the actual character doing it, you're like... Well, uh, is this going to be cool? And yeah. then you see someone you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Perfect. So cool. Uh, so that voice actor is actually uh, Andrew Morgado, who, uh, from from everything I've heard, is actually kind of a newcomer. He is a super newcomer, I think. Like, when we got the... I remember Caleb brought me in. He was like, listen to all these you know, auditions. When we listened to that one, we were like, oh, like that sounds super awesome. Like, what else has this guy been in? And it was like... Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Because, right. I mean, we've had, we've had amazing uh, 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 voice actors like Adam Harrington. Like, people right. know Adam Harrington. He's right. in The Wolf Among Us. He's uh, in many games. Matt Mercer. You know, like, all those people that are, like, a long, super long list. But exactly. we actually really like this guy's audition, so we brought him in. So, uh, the, the about the concept process. Like, we see, you know, these two gigantic weapons. You see this kind of metal, this uh, molten, almost metal, like, graft into his body and stuff. Right. So, uh, I think we can just go ahead and walk through kind of the, uh, the concept portion of it, which starts right here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's see, which one is it? Boom, boom, perfect. There we go. All right, you can drive this if you'd yep. like to zoom in. So this stuff. is actually the very first concept sheet that we got. So uh, Will, Big Friday Coiner, was the concept artist for this character. Um, so we, we had this idea that he was like this everyman. He was like this factory worker turned into a uh, bruiser thug for mm-hmm. essentially like the, the mob, I suppose. Um, and this is exactly what we got back for our first round of sketches. We had all these guys that just uh, felt like the everyman like they they were like this they they fit the the you know the role of that bruiser thug but they were a little bit too um they were like and uh, same thing that we had with Viridian I mentioned last time it was like we we thought that they kind of looked like NPCs but it was very appropriate for him because he was supposed to be you know he's not yeah. born in a nobil- nobility he's not a princess he's like a guy on the streets who yeah. suddenly is like now Th- this it, it's almost an interesting place to start like right. start at it's generic, generic man it's really appropriate you know um, so so we kind of looked at these concepts and we had these idea for these weapons that were kind of um, machinists like he built them himself you know they were like stripped from pieces of a factory that he like put together and, and built himself um, but w- w- the direction from this concept was essentially like let's take this guy and bring him make him be a hero he needs to like be elevated to, to shaper status which is mm-hmm. something we think about a lot like what is this person okay now like kick it up to, to shaper status mm-hmm. so take a right here yeah okay uh, and so this is this is the direction that we went in. We kind of beefed him up, up quite a bit. We gave him this huge pauldron. He's got this thing like almost bolted into his back. This piece of this furnace. Um, he's got this metal inlaid tattoos all over his body to make him look super cool and like super unique. Uh, and then we went for this this double bladed sword here. Uh, it was a request from Gasty. Uh, so we haven't mentioned yet. Gasty is the kit designer here. Yeah. I'm just revealing it. So <laughs> easy. <laughs> I'm just gonna talk about his yeah. stuff. 
Um, we had an, uh, a request for two uh, one-handed weapons, identical weapons, so you could do uh, some things that you'll see in his kit later. Um, so this is kind of the direction we went with, and we have this kind of final mood image with the, all the glow on and the mm -hmm. weapons uh, that kind of extend out. Uh, and his tattoo is glowing as well. This is what we showed uh, showed at the uh, PAX, panel. PAX panel. Absolutely. So this is kind of the, the final concept that we did, and then taken by Kevin into the, the full model ended up being very, very nice. Uh, yeah, so so one of the first things that, you know, Gassy wanted to explore is the idea of multiple weapons, you know, right? right. If we didn't want one gigantic <laughs> weapon. You know, you've got you've got Volick for that, for example. Right. Um, uh, but then the, the kind of task was like, do we want them to be asymmetrical? Do we want them to be symmetrical? What happened there? Right. So we had a we had a point in time where we had a bladed weapon and a uh, like um, a mace, a giant mace, so like kind of a, a blunt style weapon, uh, and we were thinking that we would go into um, almost like a combo character, and this is kind of what uh, Basco ended up being, but we had kind of a left-right with his basic attack that had different effects, and we also had you know all these different things that he could combo with with his basic abilities, but we ended up deciding that we wanted two identical weapons uh, for a few reasons that you'll see within the kit, uh, mm -hmm. and it uh, overall, I think, makes a more striking character because he looks super cool kind of running with both the weapons out at the same time. Yeah, and the weapons also have this key component that we wanted to talk about that we will talk more about is we need them to be uh, retractable and have two different forms. That's true. Pretty much. That's something that we're just trying to do visually. It's super cool. You'll see once you get in the game and it looks really nice. Yeah. So, I mean, Basco is going to be uh, is going to be really awesome. Obviously, he's a bruiser and uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about as far as his kit is concerned. So, yeah, should we go back to I the... Do you want to go back to the render real quick? Yeah. We'll, oh, we'll we're going to hear the VO. Ready? That's fine. Someone shank his ass. That's Our cause right. is just. They better give up now. Who's with me? Someone shank this ass. <laughs> Good. I love that line. I love, you know, all of Chris Latois' writings of, like, just throwing in those badass lines, you know, that uh, this guy, I think, brings to life. You it's know, true. He does really in well. In fact, he had some really, like, he had some lines that were, like, really deep in his character. We're like, we, you hear sometimes in the game, like, there's one in particular when you, when you, he kills Petrus because he doesn't like Petrus very much. Uh -huh. That's incredible. He I'm doesn't really like gonna, any of the. Right, he doesn't the like <laughs> any of the people in the West. Higher ups. Uh, so make sure that you guys get some kills on Petrus. Uh, get some kills on Michaela because there's a lot of delightful lines. Perfect. Um, uh, but I think George can start up the game real quick. No, let's not start up the game quite yet. You want to do it? Okay. Let's just wait because then it always is in my ear. It's like thirty uh, seconds say. until minions spawn. Course, I'm like, no, course. please stop. Um, uh, okay, so we can talk about some of the goals with the kit. Uh, okay. So like I said, this kit was designed by Gasty. Uh, I'm just kind of uh, sharing it with y'all. Uh, so the original, original idea for the kit was that Gasty wanted to feel like a fighting game character. Like that was the, that was the, the one-liner essentially for the character. How can we make him feel like he's in a... Uh <laughs> There's some <laughs> stuff going on over there. Uh, 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 how, how can we make it feel like he's in a fighting game? Particularly, and this was like done for all of the... Um, all the reference for his abilities as well as his animations. He wanted to feel like Cervantes from Soul Calibur. So, like, mm. this is a Gasty favorite. Besides Amy, I know he likes Amy the best. Yeah. But he was like, I wanted to feel like Cervantes. I want to take, like, these abilities and see if we can, like, make them work within a uh, MOBA. So, this is something that it sounds like a really good idea and it ended up being very cool. But when we originally did it, uh, the character was very, very spammy. They had, uh, he had a lot more ability reactivations than he has right now. And it ended up kind of feeling like, Two button mashy. Two button mashy. Like yeah. in a fighting game, it's really it's okay because of how quick the attacks are. Mm. But in this, because you have the time to hit and you have you know the y they need the ability to counterplay it. And yeah. it ended up feeling that you were just mashing the same button over and over and over. Um, so we dialed back on that, but we we learned really good things, and it really informed how the kit ended up eventually. Yeah. So uh, and, and we also wanted it to be uh, very active, right? You right. never wanted it to be inactive, right? He, we, because he had this like combo style gameplay, we always wanted him to be doing something. Uh, so this kind of led to um, w what his first ult was. Uh, was it locked him down? It was like this like uh, targeted suppression. It was like a melee range Viana ultimate, um, and it was very powerful. Um, and it was kind of inspired by this one move that Cervantes has. But we were like, this is locking this character down for way too long. Yeah. Um, it's weird to go from like, oh, I'm I'm kind of button mashing or I'm comboing, and then right. like I press R and I'm like, and okay, Wait. and I back. You know, uh, it was right. very weird. So that was kind of the the biggest holdout on the kit was that we had a core kit that we really liked, but we didn't have an ultimate that we liked yet. And I remember Gassy and I kind of like got together and we were like sitting there with him like, uh, like trying to um, trying to think of what we wanted to do. And something that struck us was just how much this guy felt 
and moved like Kratos. <laughs> so this <laughs> if you're is familiar with God of War. This is like a double inspiration um, from different games. So we like sat there and we were like, what would Kratos do in this situation? <laughs> WWKD, we had yeah. the band. <laughs> um, so we were just like, let's make him just like Kratos as hard as possible in this ultimate. So there's like a kind of a, it, it's really fun to us when like, we get inspiration from other games like we had you know the Azuna drop from Moya Ultimate and Cervantes and Kratos yeah. kind of inspiring the, uh, the way that this guy moved and the things that he did so that was that's what kind of I like I like the line of let's go full Kratos right let's go as hard Kratos as possible um, so that was kind of what eventually the ult came and you'll see it in game it ends up being very very cool uh, the final thing that Gassy wanted on this uh, this character was a little bit more build diversity than mm -hmm. your average bruiser. So uh, most bruisers are kind of locked in. Volok wants to build more damage-y. Cerulean wants to build more tanky utility. You know, like, they kind of have, like, one path that's relatively optimal. You could build them other ways, but it requires, you know, you to make the plays correctly. So Gasty wanted at least some some bits on this kit that would allow a more diverse item path. Um, and he ended up doing that in a very interesting way that I find uh, very compelling. Um, so we'll have to get in to actually see that. Of course. Oh, are you ready? Yeah, I think we're all I set. Thi I think the chat is ready. I think the chat is uh, as hyped as they, they possibly could be. Yeah. So we'll have George start the game. Uh, let's we will choose him. Whatever. Yeah, let's do Hunter. Okay. Yep. There you go. How many got to die let's, let's do one without power. I'll do the, my normal... Uh, ooh, boy, I got bad. You don't have it? I got... Uh, well, that works. There's no yeah, power. Yeah, it just, it. it just won't show his cooldown so accurately. And let's do this. Let's choose that. And normal announcer. Okay, cool. All right. We'll be in, in just a second. So, uh, you know, while this is loading up, what are you talking about? There's no load time. Um, uh. We'll be getting into uh, into game to show you guys uh, Basco the Enforcer. So just to uh, run through the TLDR again, combo-based, quick, fast, agile, mobile, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, a full Kratos ulti. Full so Kratos. You guys will see it in just a second. Okay, so shall we switch on over let's there? Let's do it. Let's get to game cam. Give me that alt tab. Thank you very much. Game cam. Okay, cool. Boom. Let me kind of scoot in a little bit. Go for it. Get close. All right. So here he is. I'm going to level up to 20. He is a awesome looking model. Very, yeah. very cool. Kevin did a really, really good job on this. Uh, very happy with it. Uh, so as per usual, I'm going to buy 100 power. All right. Mm. So we have the adjusted power values. I need to do that. Now I got 100. Perfect. Guess he made it hard. Gasty, gasty. Had to think. So I'm going to run out here and do the usual. It sounds a little quiet. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. A little bit of voice, a little bit of sound effects, and then a little bit of all. And you guys let me know if that's too loud or too quiet. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good to me too. Okay, I'll teleport over here and wait for minions, minions to spawn. Okay, so now let's do some, let's do some flirts. Ain't you something? Be in my tent. Just got to meet in that tent. <laughs> <laughs> Bad man, you want to be someplace else. Ta All right, here's a joke. In the Dawn Gate, you break the bindings. In Meridia, bindings break you. Good joke. <laughs> That's good. That's let's, good. Let's do a laugh. See if he laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> okay, let's teleport someplace and do his uh, do his dance. So he's got a pretty sweet dance. He's got a he's got a, another big dance like Meridian, where he's got the fire spinning. The fire spinning. Tools break. Use fists. Great. Yep. All right. Coming. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to meet over here where probably my friends are at. Where are my oh. friends at? There's George. Yep. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go through his kit. So uh, Basco is a pure shaper. So that means he has no resource to cast his abilities, but he has a passive which is called Underdog. So Underdog is actually relatively complicated. So I'm going to explain how it works. Uh, so Underdog is. Whenever Basco drops below 50% HP on a cooldown, he gains a 35% boost to his m the stat that he has invested the most Vim into, which is kind of confusing. Um, so essentially, whatever he spent the most uh, amount of his Vim on, he will gain a huge boost to that stat. Right mm -hmm. now, of course, because I'm holding a ton of power, that uh, boost is going to be power. You can see in my passive right here, it'll actually say... Uh, currently, Basco will gain 35 power when he becomes empowered, and that will live update. That will so live. as soon like if you're if you've got two stats that are close, as soon as you buy the next stat, you know like if, if you have 99 power and 98 armor, as soon as you buy that, that those next two points of armor, it's going to become armor, right? But it's a little bit different. But than it's that vim value. So it's vim value. Yeah. So a point of health is not nearly as valuable as a point of power because mm. you can get 500 health on an item when you can only get 60 power, right? Yeah. Um, so it's it's a little bit confusing. There's a little bit of math, but basically how it actually nets out is that whatever your 
core items are in, that's what you're going to get. If you have two core armor items, you're going to get armor. If you're going to get, if you have two core health items, I'm talking about legendary uh, mm -hmm. tier items, you're going to get health. Um, the six stats that it can be are uh, this correlate to the six main items. So it can be health, armor, magic resist, uh, power, haste, and uh, life drain. Although life drain is pretty difficult to get, you have to have it, it kind of built into your uh, loadout. Um, but it's actually it's it's pretty interesting because it can make Basco. Uh, very bursty when he gets low, yeah. make him very resilient when he gets low, giving a huge boost to his uh, health allows him to do different things. Um, so I'll, I'll proc this right here on my uh, power. So you'll see I get that little buff right there. It's green because it's power. Mm -hmm. My basic attacks will deal more damage. Uh, well, he is level one. Let's be he, he's, he's level one. You guys can get level 20 yeah. so I don't murder you instantly. Uh. <laughs> he doesn't know the insta 20. He what doesn't know the insta cheat. Um, so, so that passive is a 30 second cooldown. You can see it's still on cooldown down here. If I were to go trade out some of my items, I could switch over to um, his armor or magic resist. Uh, anything that uh, anything that he's he's building the most of is what he'll um, what he'll proc. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a actually a pretty fun passive, and it's kind of the part that allows you to build things very differently. It's it's really interesting to be playing around. It feels like uh, Fenmore, where you're like. I know that when I'm low, I'm super powerful. Playing around that passive can make can allow Basco to make really, really big plays. Mm -hmm. uh, so Basco is a melee shaper, of course. He's got a pretty nice basic attack cycle that I really like. I like that second one. Or like the, the cross. Oh, man. That's so loud. Control all text, guys. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I like that one right there. That one looks really cool. Like the, the middle one, the double Boom. one? Yeah, yeah, that one's my favorite, too. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so we can go ahead and go through his abilities now. So Basco's Q is Revolt. Uh, it is... Oh, God. All right, let's wait for the... Good old, good old Come on, come on. Good old I'm out of here. Uh, so it is a short-range charge ability that does physical damage. It has a very, very low cooldown. So this is a three-second cooldown ability, charge, and deal physical damage. However, it has another component to it as well uh, that's based on when I use my other ability. So I'll use another ability, and then I'll get back to, mm -hmm. uh, I'll get back to Q. Uh, so, Basco's W ability is Unbreakable. When he casts it, he chains all nearby shapers as well as uh, jungle creeps to him. As long as they're chained, they uh, take magical damage over time and they generate a shield for Basco. And also, the enemies are slowed. So, you see what happens here. I chain them, I start gaining the shield. I ga gain shield based on how many shapers or jungle creeps I've, cha I've uh, chained. Mm -hmm. So, I will gain uh, more and more shielding the more targets that I've chained. Uh, if I'm in a team fight with five people and I uh, chain all those people, it will um, give me a huge amount of shield. So Basco really, really wants to get in as deep as possible, use that ability to chain slow and deal damage to them, and then he'll gain that huge shield. It makes him very, very uh, difficult to kill. Uh, it does not proc against uh, these minions. minions right here, yeah. but it will proc against uh, jungle minions. So it allows Basco to be a very, very powerful uh, jungle character. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see I'm gaining, I'm, I'm max level against low level creeps, but I'm and gaining a huge amount of shield and I've got a lot of power. Does it scale with power? It, it does, does indeed. Okay. So both the damage and the shield scale with power. Okay. Um, so this is, this is actually a really, really powerful ability. It's what allows Basco to bruise really easily kind of in the early to mid game. If he's in a 1v1 or a 2v2, it's just, it's a really, really strong ability. Yeah. We've seen it continually be strong in playtests. And, and the chains are, are based on distance, right? right? So they can be broken. So 100%. yeah, so it's a 500 range to pop. If they, he walks away to 650, it'll break. They will not take damage anymore. I will not gain any more shielding yeah. uh, and they will not be slowed. So as an enemy playing against it, you definitely want to get away from it as quick as possible, break those chains. Um, will give him uh, less shielding. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the Q for a second. So if Basco has cast his any other ability before he casts his Q, it actually gets empowered. It deals more physical damage and applies um, on hit effects. So anything that would be applied via basic attacks normally, things like Conquest, Ruin, Betrayal, Duress, uh, duress Rogue, Hoplite, uh, uh, Rogue, uh, Duelist, uh, can now be... Um, can now be procced by his uh, Q. So this is a pretty powerful ability. Generally, Basco can afford about one to two on hit items or take him as well in his uh, in his loadout. Uh, and it's something that you want to keep in mind all the time. Because his Q is such a low cooldown and his other abilities are able to proc this relatively easily, continually think about weaving that yeah. Q in between multiple abilities. You'll see how this works best with the E, but just doing a Q and then dashing immediately um, will allow, or using a W and then dashing immediately with the Q gets out that extra damage. Being able to proc the empowered revolt every single time uh, will kind of maximize his damage yeah, uh, in the in, and, in and the fight. And therein lies kind of the whole combo 
you know, fighting game kind of mechanic that right. Gatsu was going for. P- particularly with the E ability. Yeah. So, so the E ability is Onslaught. It has a interesting uh, <laughs> cast type, which is targeted line plus cone. So Basco will dash in a direction and then deal cleave. He can then recast to jump to a location and deal an AoE stun and deal more physical damage. So this is kind of his core comboing ability. So he will dash forward with the cleave, use his Q, use his E, and then his Q's going to be up pretty soon because it's only a three second cooldown. And he can use two empowered Q's for every E. Um, this is what makes Basco super fun. Like th- this, this core combo here of E, Q, W, and then he can Q, and then E, and then Q again, yeah. is his full, full core combo. If you can perform that combo reliably, it raises his damage output uh, really, really significantly because of all the empowered Qs. Because because with with your, since E has dual cast, your W has one cast, you can theoretically get three empowered Qs off, right? Right. It's something that you get a lot of practice actually when you're jungling because it's relatively easy against non-moving targets. Yeah. So you'll get in that, that, uh, that flow of like E, Q, W, Q, and then E, and then Q. You kind of have to wait for your cooldowns to just be right mm-hmm. and perfect, but th- that's yeah, kind that's of the, the full combo. Um, and this ability is really, really satisfying. Just uh, being able to move across the battlefield, doing those AoE stuns, uh, those AoE cleaves, uh, really, really fun. The stun is only 0.75 seconds, so we kind of consider it that micro stun. So it's mm-hmm. not like a uh, tank level CC, yeah. but uh, it's more like Petrus, um, his, his force slam. So mm-hmm. it's a... Uh, Nice, nice CC, allows him to close, allows him to get into the middle of the fight, get his W off, get his Q off. Uh, There's also another component to the second cast of the E that you haven't talked about yet. Uh, second cast of the E? Yeah. That's done? Yeah. I already talked about it. The walls. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a jump, so it can go over the shortest of walls. Uh, it's not super far. All right, let's go over here. Let's see if I can make it over here. Yep. So it can go over kind of the smallest walls, what you can expect to go over with a Petrus W as well mm-hmm. for people who play a lot of bruisers. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> Renzo. Appreciate it. Um, so it can't go over walls, but you have to kind of be in the right position to do it. Yeah. Okie dokie. I think that's it for his core kit. So let's go ahead and move to his uh, ultimate. So the full Kratos. So full Kratos. I'm going to go ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> his ulti is just an insta kill. I'm going, to, I'm going to damage the Kent, not kill him instantly. Uh, so he's got some low HPs. Well, and then I'm going to go over here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just use the ultimate, and then uh, and then I'll explain it afterwards. <laughs> so that is oh god, that is Basco's ultimate. That's so Kratos. <laughs> so it, Basco's ultimate is uprising. He throws his weapons in target direction, uh, attached to chains. The first shaper that they hit, they will uh, pull him to them, and then he'll deal damage to them based on how low their health is, so it's an execute-style damage. If that target dies within three seconds of being hit, he will get a reset and be able to cast it again. So now I've got two low health targets. I'm going to go here. Boom. Cast again. Boom. And then I could cast again. (laughs) Luckily, Zakent will die again (laughs) for me. Uh, And I'll recast uh, recast Uprising again. Uh, there is a total 15 second window, which uh, Basco may recast Uprising. So if he gets a kill, he's got up to 15 seconds, but uh, that doesn't get refreshed for each additional kill. He's got 15 seconds from first cast for all additional casts. Yeah. And and the the thing to be clear, the ulti itself does not have to deal the killing blow Correct. for you to get the reset. Right. right. So if I, if I did this, there's this debuff on the target at this point. If that target dies within three seconds to me or anyone else on my team, I get that yes. reset. Um, ad- additionally, a little uh, little bit to it is that the target is rooted while I am using my ultimate, so they can't move uh, for the duration for that duration as I pull to them. Oh, <laughs> nah, 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 we both died. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks to Kent. <laughs> good old, good old George. Um, but uh, but so the, the rooted during the duration, but as soon as I get to them, they will become unrooted. Yeah, I, I really like that that aspect of it. It's like you know, the, like the Zalgus reset is can be so finicky sometimes. Right. Like like if you throw an auto attack right after your your R, if your auto attack is the one that kills them, or your E is the one that kills them, you don't get that reset. Right. It's exactly. Like you go to Sad Town. Right? Yeah. We actually had a game recently where I was playing uh, Basco and and Hunter Zalgus was playing Zalgus, and we had like this like super reset team. It was just <laughs> like we would just go in like crazy. I would get one person, and then he would immediately use his ultimate and reset that, and then we just like chain each o- off each other resets uh, that's really awesome well. um so i mean that's his full kit uh obviously you know uh with the kind of combos between his his abilities and his q he can put out a lot of damage he can tank a lot of damage and that's kind of the diversity that uh this is the loudest thing in the world i know sorry um 
Uh, that's kind of the diversity and build that Gasty wanted as well. Because the passive just allows him to be versatile, right? Right. It allows him to be like, oh, if you build full tank, when you drop below fifty percent, you, you will get more tank. God, right? If you're building full damage, when you drop below fifty percent, you'll be doing a hell of a lot of right. damage, right? Like waiting until you get below that fifty percent and then using his ultimate is going to like allow for all that extra damage. Uh, really, really, really strong. Um, but of course, you gotta wait till you're super, or you know, below 50% to do it. So if you're building mm -hmm. all power, you're gonna be relatively squishy. Um, but additionally, it's gonna power up your W. It's gonna power up your R. It's gonna make you really, really strong. He's yeah. Um, so as far as builds are concerned, what do you what do you usually see? I mean, it's hard to to uh, recommend one because he's right. so diverse. But well, what do you personally build on him? Uh, so I build a little bit more damage than this, but this is a really, really good um, kind of general general set for him. Yeah. Uh, so the sorry iron that we suggest is resilience. I really like to play Basco as jungle, although I've seen him be a very successful gladiator as well. Um, so I would start with Brazilians because it's going to reduce the most damage for him in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Get some pots, of course. Uh, Glory is actually a really, really good uh, pickup for him, which is not something we generally recommend on people. Um, because he's going to want to be in the middle of people so often with his W. He's going to get a lot of returns off of that uh, that Glory. Because he can stick in for a long time with the shield granted from his W as well, he's kind of get that damage over time. We also... Uh, it's kind of a, it's not a direct buff, but if you've been paying attention to our recent patch notes, uh, you um, know that we've actually buffed Glory because uh, of the changes to Will. So it used to be that if a player had Will and you had Glory, it almost completely 100% negated the damage mm -hmm. because of that, uh, re reducing that magical damage. But now that it's a percentage-based magical reduction, it actually made Glory a lot stronger. So I like to see Glory kind of come back as, mm -hmm. as a core item. So it's a really good core item on him. Uh, so Rebirth is something also that we rarely recommend on someone's core set. But it's really interesting on Basco because of his passive. So what, no matter what you buy, you're always going to be in a more powerful state when you drop below 50% and proc Underdog. Uh, having that Rebirth on top of it will allow you to guarantee you're going to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Generally, if you buy both Glory and Rebirth, the proc that you're going to get from Underdog is going to be a health proc. Uh, and means that when you drop below 50% HP, you'll get a huge boost to your, your health. And then if you drop even further and proc Rebirth, you'll gain a huge amount of health back. Yeah. Uh, and really, like people will be like, oh, why isn't he dying? Cause because it's like it health. Like, doo -doo -doo yeah, because it, it, it kind of synergizes. If they burst you down below 25% from like 75 or 100, or what, what is Rebirth proc at? 30? 35, I believe. 35? So if you get bursted from like 30. 100 to below 35%, all of a sudden you've got Underdog and Rebirth ticking, and it's, and like, it's like, boom. boom. You, get, you get healed a whole bunch. So a really, really strong item for him, um, regardless of your path. So even if you go full power, if you have that Rebirth, lets you stay a little alive a little longer and, and hold on to that. Uh, that power buff. And also to be clear about Underdog, it, it is only the six basic stats, right? So you can't it build like Mastery Basco. Yeah. Ma mastery yeah. doesn't exist. Uh, penetration. Health regen. Yeah, right, stuff right. like that. It's yeah. only the six base stats represented by these items. Okay. Uh, so the third item we have here is Subjugation. Uh, this is a really strong item for Basco because of his ability to apply damage to all characters in a fight. Both his E is, uh, you know, both activations of his E is really easy to hit a lot of people with, but uh, more so his W allows you to just chain all those people in a really, really wide, r uh, wide radius, mm -hmm. get the damage on, and then put the sub subjugation the oh, the subjugation debuff as well. Uh, this almost feels like, like a wow combo to me, like like Thunderclap back in the day. You like hit everyone, <laughs> and then like the damage of everyone goes down. It makes him a, a really effective tank, but also a really effective debuffer uh, against the enemy team. Mm -hmm. So Adamance is a pretty classic uh, offensive item for most bruisers. Same thing with Betrayal. These are the things that you say, like, okay, a lot of physical damage on the enemy team, but I need I need to keep rolling power, or a lot of magic damage on the enemy team, and I need to keep rolling power. Uh, buying either of these items is good. I actually really like Betrayal on him because it will proc off of his empowered Q. Yeah. Uh, so if you have that Revolt empowered, it'll apply on hit effects from uh, that would normally only get applied by basics, including Betrayal. Uh, Faith is the exact same thing. It is the much more defensive option for uh, for against magical damage. Um, this one will allow you to regenerate some HP as well as have that shield. Uh, this is pretty core if the enemy team is stacking lots of magic damage. And then Defiance is really good for him as well. Uh, because he can rely so much on the mobility stun, the shielding on his W, the damage on his Q, getting something like Defiance, having a ton of health built up, uh, will allow him to reset all those things, essentially, and potentially and allow him to um, survive the, the fight that's coming up. And just to be clear, because uh, I'm, I'm actually asking this question for myself, and I'm pretty sure I already know the answer, but loadouts have nothing to do with your underdog passive, correct? Not true. So, so oh it, really? it is, it is uh, simil similar to Zeri, the only other person who has a mechanic like this in the game. It is all bonus stats. 
anything that Basco does not scale naturally. So if I have the, let's say I have the 8% 8 life drain loadout that's kind of becoming popular lately, um, my first underdog, my underdog will remain life drain for a little while until I start building other things and maybe okay. I, I leave the life drain tree more significantly. So yes, it absolutely will take into account what you have in your loadout. Anything beyond your base base stats that you scale per level. Interesting. So, so, so if you build like a full armor or for he full health loadout page, yes. the first underdog you proc, assuming you maybe buy another life or another resilience, is going to make you insanely tanky yes. for that stage of the game. Absolutely. Interesting. Absolutely. So it, it really, I really, really like to press the early game as Basco. I like to try to take early game objectives, whether that be a jungle invade or taking the wells really early, pushing a tower really early because he is so potentially tanky in those situations. Like, people don't expect it. They're like, all right, let's do this fight. And then it's a 2v2, but he gets that huge power boost or he gets that huge armor boost and he becomes unkillable. Um, it can really, really lead you to take those early game objectives. Awesome. Uh, yep. And as far as that loadout is concerned, do you have anything in particular that you like to run? Uh, so I have been taking, uh, I take generally my 20, uh, 19.2 armor plus hoplite loadout. Okay. So like that's just really strong for all bruisers. Uh, I, I've noticed that a lot of, I or at least our internal playtests lately have been very, very physical heavy, so taking mm -hmm. armor has been really nice. Um, then starting with that resilience, you basically take no damage in the jungle because of your W. Yeah. Um, it's it, th That's a really strong loadout for me. I think that Jesus has been trying the 8% uh, life drain loadout, which is strong too, uh, particularly if you're in kind of the gladiate role and you're trying to last hit. You'll last hit and end up actually healing quite a bit. Uh, as far as jungle is concerned, do you start with E or W? I actually start with E, uh, W, okay. sorry, W, uh, because it's pretty good damage and it keeps you relatively healthy. The E is slightly more damage, but uh, I do like to take that W. I like to get E and Q quickly before I try to gank because just the, even though the mobility is short, no that little bit of mobility could be the you know difference between a kill and not a kill. Absolutely. He's, uh, he's got a lot of like little mobility on his, oops, besides his ultimate. He's got a lot of little mobility on his kit that is... Uh, uh, really powerful. All right, and spells. Just, just, just to make it clear, I had right. to check with George uh, to make sure that we were okay to show spells because you know Dibs has been known to to leak a few spells here and there. It's true. <laughs> so uh, in spells uh, right now in the jungle, I so like to take Vanquish as I do with almost any jungler. Um, taking things like Blitz and Dispel are really, really potent for um, for most bruisers. The, the bane of most bruisers is just running into like oh, I see that tasty Zalgus to get, but then you get rude and you're like, oh, okay. Um, but you know, taking that blitz, using it at the exact right time, can allow you to close in on the enemies that you generally wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, you could take blink, uh, and and there's there's a lot of other kind of choices too. But I think that the the primary ones, dispel, blitz, uh, blink, vanquish, are uh, are the most common choices. So uh, just one more time, uh, run through his kit, run through a nice combo on Nisa or something real quick, and then we'll go to a few minutes of Q and A because uh, we do have some uh, stuff to talk about actually after the we reveal. We do. So. That's true. E, and then I'm going to Q, W. Oh, I ran out of time on the combo. Another Q. That's the full combo. That's what you got to get. Good but amount of damage. And then we'll show the reset as well. Boom. So good. So good. The sounds and the animation are just so fantastic. It's so... It's, that's so Kratos, pretty that's, much. That's, <laughs> that's, that, so, that's so Basco. That's so Basco. I love it. Uh, and oh. people are asking, can his ult take him over walls? Absolutely. Absolutely it can. Uh, if George wants to come close to this wall over here, we'll show you. Whoops, I missed. I thought he was going to keep walking. I thought he was going to keep walking. I'm not bad. <laughs> if, you hit, if you hit, it'll take you over walls. If you don't, uh, such, you get juke. Such juke. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so we'll take the next five, ten minutes to go over some uh, Q&A. If you yep. guys do have questions, put a Q with a question, a Q with a colon in the chat, and then state your question, and we'll answer it, uh, obviously, to the best of our knowledge. I see some questions about range. He's got a relatively short range on his Q. It's just 300, 500 on his W. It's a 250 on the first cast of his E, and then a 400 on the second cast of his E, and then a 1,000 range on his ultimate, which is pretty good. Oh, so this, the second cast is a little bit further yeah, on his E. the second cast is a little bit further. If you're just talking about, like, this distance and then that distance, yeah. a little bit further. Okay. 150, it's, it's a nice little extra bit. Gotcha. Uh, what would happen if Basco got hit with a Zalgus ulti, taking him from 51% HP to 34% HP, proccing both Underdog and Rebirth at the same time? Would Underdog kick in and affect the extra HP effect on Rebirth? I assume that uh, Underdog would go in first, so it would add the additional health and then Rebirth. I believe that would be the case. And that's Rebirth that's is a percentage, so uh, you're Rebirthing for more. Correct. You would be gotcha. Rebirthing for more. Good question, though. Good uh, question. Yeah, that's exactly like that. what, what we need. 
Um, let's see. Does dispel cancel Bosco's ultimate? So will it will it dispel the, maybe the execute portion of it? It will no? not dispel the execute portion of it, but it will just dispel the root. Okay, but you cannot get rid of yeah, the execute reset. Yeah, the execute aspect. is not a debuff. It's something that you can cleanse. It is just on him to uh, mm -hmm. to get. Uh, does ultimate uh, can the ultimate be used on jungle camps? No, mm -mm. and it can't be used on regular minions. It'll either. only impact on the first shape where it hits. Yeah. so it'll go straight. So you can through go through lane minions, minions, through jungle minions, right, through, through parasite, through the parasite, which is pretty critical. Yeah. Um, do you, so do you only get thirty five health from his passive if you buy lots of health? Uh, no, so you get thirty five percent of all the extra health that you get. So let's just show you guys. Uh, like, let's 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 change out. Let's this go to HP, and then you can kind of see. So with my base loadout, I'm actually getting health because I have health in my loadout. Not very much because I don't have much in my loadout. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's uh, let's go with this like boom boom boom. So a really healthy build. Yeah. Uh, Defiance being the highest health item in the entire game. I'm gaining 600 Jesus. health from my passive. So you'll see that I'm already you're at 3.6k. I'm already a beefy guy, and I drop below 50 right, 50%. Right. Boom! I get that little health icon. 4.2k. I get that, that 4k. Like getting that six almost 600 healing That's is insane. super strong. And how long does Underdog last? It lasts for six seconds. Okay. And uh, the cooldown is 30. The six second, yeah, and the cooldown is 30. So you can't proc it. You generally won't proc it more than once in a fight, but that's all you really need, I think. And passives like that are not affected by CDR or anything like that. Uh, correct. Right. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So you can't be like, I can have underdog up all the time right, with no. all this CDR. Crazy. So now I can proc the, the armor one. You guys see the little armor thing pops up. Boop. So he's got different little icons for each, uh, mm -hmm. depending on which one he is. So you always, you don't need to like be like, "What's he building? Let me take my calculator yeah. out." Right? <laughs> you'll see. You'll be like, "Oh man, he's like really, he's really building heavy into armor. He's really building heavy into MR or whatever, mm -hmm. what have you." Uh, all right. Let's see. Oh, look at these minions. I know they always get Scumbag us. Scumbag minions. They're the worst. Okay. Uh, what was his thought process for making his W do magical damage, and does this make him a hybrid shaper like Volick? Uh, it doesn't. It, it's it's more of a flavor thing for Gasty, I believe. So he wanted them to be ha kind of have that that burning feel. So he put it as a magical damage. Uh, it is not significant enough damage portion that we're going to consider that a um, a hybridization. It's more just a flavor of that ability. It doesn't actually. It deals good damage over time. the The frequency that you actually get all eight ticks against the enemy is relatively rare. Um, the damage is more just an extra little flavor on top of the slow, on top of the shield, mm -hmm. and uh, against targets who don't move, like jungle creeps, good clear. Uh, someone's asking, how well does this, does this passive work with hunger? Real rise. Uh, so it's tricky. So that's um, almost the tricky one. We'll, we can probably post in maybe a Reddit thread later the exact conversions of these stats to, mm -hmm. to um, the Vim values. To the Vim values. It's tricky because of these These two items are the first ones that give life drain, which is the stat we're looking for, not hunger, which actually has none on it whatsoever. It actually has power. Uh, but these, both these items actually have a lot of other stats on them as well. Uh, I think if you buy a desire, yeah, I'll have the life drain boost here. If I end up Upgrading that item, I'll actually go to armor or power. Really? And yeah, so it's 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 tricky. If you have that eight percent life drain, that's becoming a little bit more passive in loadouts. You'll stick with it for longer, um, but it's never really. It's mo the most rare of all of them. You'd have to have a very very specific early order to keep it. Uh, someone's asking, what are what is the max targets for his W? As many as is around him, right? Uh, yes, it is as many as around him. So so there is the rarer case where like. I get invaded, or I'm doing an invade, and it's a one v one in the jungle, and I chain him, the the, the opponent, and four mushrooms, and also four mushrooms, and like he cannot get through that shield. There's no yeah. chance. Of course, I've also aggroed mushrooms onto myself, which is not always good. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, there's no uh, no target limit. Most team fights you'll be fighting uh, five because it can only uh, it target shapers in a team fight. Uh, but yeah, no, no target limit. No spirit well workers, correct? Not spirit well workers. It's no. just the jungle camp. So either the mushrooms, the uggers, or the fish. Right. Primarily for it's just for team fighting and jungling. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, how many conquest procs can you get off with one combo? Uh, I think the conquest so cooldown is like six seconds. No, right? it's only three seconds. It's only actually. three. So wow. let me go ahead and buy one. <coughs> I get some power too. This could be interesting. Yeah, let's make sure this is this is the case. So let's go to conquest. So yeah, this effect has a three second cooldown. So very, very, very strong. Let me try to meter out my combo correctly. So I'm gonna E, Q, so that's one. I'm gonna W, Q, that's two, E again, wait, and then Q again. So that's three total conquest procs. Uh, super strong. You gotta build the power for it as well, but uh, very that's strong. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. Interesting. Um, do, do, do. Is the parasite con considered a jungle creep? Can your W yes, proc on him? The parasite absolutely can. Uh, so a nice five-on-five -five fight around the parasite, you could actually get six procs off on your W. 
assuming uh, they're all clumped up. Yes. And be like, yes, I'm super tank. That's man. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is it. That's probably the parasite most becomes the ghost, the sixth man of the enemy team, uh, and gives you more ulti. Suit. Yep. Uh, more more shielding. Can he ulti dibs mid flight? Yep, he absolutely can. So and he will root him and stop the flight. He will root him and stop the flight. So roots knock up stop awesome. the flight. I really, I I'm really excited. I want to see a video of of a dibs trying to escape and Bosco just be like. You're not going anywhere and hooking to him and mm -hmm. uh, and murdering him. That would be really, really nice. Um, what strategies and or shapers could possibly counter Basco? So what I really like against Basco, the, the thing that's making makes Basco really um, kind of deceptive and distinct is, is his W, what allows him to get that shield. You n Like, core, any character, should probably should get a drain against Basco. So did you see him hit that W in the beginning of fight when he's probably got it on most people and he's probably most healthy? Hit that drain on him. He won't be able to... Um, to build up as much shield. Yeah. We actually made uh, Drain's Mortal Strike as well as Pain and Corruption's Mortal Strike more clear in this patch. Mm -hmm. So now when you drain someone, let's see, I assume it'll work just fine. If I click on Zekent here and I drain him, you'll actually see this new icon come up that says Mortal Strike. This is now shared between all those things. Um, Mortal Strike no longer stacks. You'll see this in the patch notes, this is a little spoiler, but mm -hmm. um, you only need to get one of those things now rather than being like, well, I should probably get two more effective. Yeah. So get one of those Mortal Strike items. Be sure to uh, apply it to him as quickly as you can. Uh, Viana has built in uh, healing and shielding reduction. It is not considered Mortal Strike. It does. Uh, it is stack its own thing. Because it is its own thing, and it's not Mortal Strike. It's its own. It's just uh, the Blood Orbs debuff. Um, getting Drain and having Viana is the only way to increase uh, that amount of Mortal Strike. But that's a really, really good way to start carrying him. But it, uh, in addition to that, you need to look at what he's building because he has more options to build hasty or tanky and get all those extra uh, extra bonuses when he drops below 50% HP. Uh, make sure you see what he's building. If he's building really, really uh, tanky, you're going to want to get a rage early because no. when he gets, you know, 80 extra armor, you're going to be super sad and you're not yeah. going to be able to kill him. <laughs> you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a very bad time. Uh, yeah, and that's important to know, you know, the Mortal Strike uh, debuff affects his shield greatly because right. it is like Mina Shield. It comes up over time, right? right? It's not like as soon as you hit W, it's right. like, oh, you hit X targets, here is X Shield. It's, it's actually counterable like, yeah. like Mina's or like uh, Viana's. Absolutely. Uh, let's see, a few more questions and then we can go into the, uh, we'll take like one or two more questions yeah. and then we'll talk about the rest uh, of the stuff we have going on. Um... Was he made to jungle, or can he lane at all? He can lane at all. Personally, I really prefer him in the jungle, but I've seen people lane as him and be relatively successful. So um, really consider who you are being uh, grouped with, uh, who, who, who you're laning with if you're going to go lane. Someone like Viana or Renzo would be my pick. Hard stun, lots of shields, lots of heals. Allows him to stay in the in the fight, even if he is uh, being poked down, which is kind of the risk of taking a, a melee character into the uh, group. Er, into the lane. I would take him as Gladiator. He can build up those stacks as Gladiator if he misses CS, and then he can proc it. So yeah. uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I definitely prefer him in jungle. I just feel like he's got really great gank potential, especially when he hits six. Uh, he's got good clear, and it's really safe and really fast. So, I like uh, so let's go ahead and switch to the big cam real quick, and we'll get out of this game. Okay. Because uh, we got two more things to yeah, talk to you guys about. They're going to take just a few minutes. Uh, do you want to just control end, or do you want to leave current match? Let's leave. Oh, yeah, you're right, Control-N. Yeah, th th this will be faster. Um, so two more things to talk about. Um, one, we're going to show off uh, all this victory noise so loud. I know, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's custom games, so we don't have to go through Karma or anything. Um, let's go ahead and go to the... Let's just go to the front end. Let's we'll show off... Um, or let's, let's, let's do the collection thing first. No, let's do, let's do this. Okay, we'll do this. Yeah. So... Um, as you guys know, if you guys were reading the Dawngate Chronicles, the, the today's page had something you guys uh, have probably seen before, some familiar thing, where the last panel was one of those branching panels, like we saw in the Zalgus Reina uh, living lore. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, the second living lore vote is going live actually this weekend. So, how it's going to work, um, we'll go ahead and show it off right now, is the, the widget that you know and love uh, will be here um, starting in the probably next 30 or so minutes uh, live for you guys on, mm -hmm. on the production environment. You'll be able to read the decisions. Uh, you have a compassionate heart or you have a courageous heart. And uh, what that's going to do is it's Michaela. Obviously, she's the, um, the involved shaper. The vote, though, isn't going – you're not going to be able to vote until Friday. Starting Friday to Sunday is going to be the voting period. A very compact, very small uh, right. voting period. Last time it was two weeks for uh, for the Reina and Zalgus. This one is going to be three days. So uh, mm -hmm. I really encourage you guys to 
start discussing which vote you guys want to take. Start discussing whether you want compassionate heart or a courageous heart. Um, again, that'll be live on Prod, you know, probably within the next 30 or so minutes, and you guys will be able to read it, but not vote until Friday. As you can see, this timer down here says vote begins in three days. So once Friday rolls around, it'll say vote ends in two uh, two days or three days or whatever right. until Sunday uh, is over. So, Mikella, all you Mikella players out there, again, just the rundown of Living Lore. Uh, you choose you choose one of the votes, one of the options. Every time you play a game, you cast one vote, one match-made game, you cast one vote towards the option of your choice. If you play the involved Shaper, this time it is only Mikella, you will cast, I think, three votes? Uh, it might be two. Two to three votes. Right. Uh, more votes if you play the involved right. Shaper, pretty much, for your, um, your decision. So, you guys get hyped about living lore. We've got a compassionate heart and a courageous heart as well. So, um, so that starts good. on Friday. Yep. Friday to Sunday. It's a short vote. It's uh, a short I vote. know it's surprising. Like yeah. a lot of people were uh, the two week kind of devoted friends or uh, right. I think it's actually gonna be I think it's gonna be really fun actually because yeah. people are gonna be like <gasps> and start now, right? You have yeah. like limited window to potentially to, to cast your vote. Yeah, two two weeks was, was pretty long for last time, you know, it was kinda like devoted friends was, was winning for Right. And it and, sa and stayed pretty consistent too, yeah. so it'd be interesting to see I think uh, if it ends up being Kind of more volatile. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, so now the collection has gotten a little bit of a uh, of a nice facelift. Yeah, a little bit of, of some bits and bobs added to it. So it's got a lot of bits and bobs. Yeah, I'll let Dibs walk you guys through this. Yeah. So the collection details has been completely kind of overhauled. Um, this is what you'll see now when you click on a character within the collection. You'll get to see a lot more stuff about them. They're still here in their kind of 3D glory. Uh, we have a special treat. We're going to show Basco's skin on on the stream today. Mm -hmm. Here it is. It is Shipbreaker Basco. He oh. looks oh, so good. So he looks super good. cool. I l Shipbreaker. Yeah. That's such a good name. <laughs> Crunch. Uh, and he's got all green effects in game. And it looks super, super cool. And he looks just like a total badass here. Uh, so what we have is a few pages that we've added. This first one is the overview. O overview. You can see all his ability icons as well as a short description of the icons. What you would generally uh, previously have seen in the uh, the details page here or when you're launching a game uh, when you click on character. A little tiny bit of uh, lore as well as whether they're melee, physical, you know, uh, range or magical or uh, hybrid. And the, two s and the skins that we have for that character. Mm -hmm. The next tab is the abilities tab. So going here will actually detail the names of the abilities as well as all of the stats related to that ability. So this is something that we didn't originally have and you'd kind of have to either get Just in a play. game and be like, yep. oh, what is it? Or like go to the internet and be like, I guess I'll look up this stuff. So this stuff directly pulls from the tooltips in the game uh, will allow you to see the scaling values completely of, love of all the abilities. It's something that's really nice for us because it becomes a a huge nightmare to start to manage something like that because you have to dynamic you have, you have to you be like oh change it here and change it here and here and yeah. here this is just dynamically pulling it from the game so these tooltips will always be accurate with their numbers as well as their scaling um and additionally have a little youtube video here that you can press play and be like oh you know like how does this ability work here's the e ability you saw it from in game jump boom uh so there's uh you can go through all the abilities see exactly how they work um, which is which is really really nice when you're kind of like looking for a new character to play or you don't know what the c abilities do You can be like what did that guy do to me like look for the ability Oh, he did this and it does this, you know, it, it, it's it's a really nice place to go and, and read through uh, So then there's the attributes page. So this is kind of the a little bit more nitty-gritty. It's really nice to see I think their uh, Their uh, items here. You can also read through the item passives what mm -hmm. they what are recommended items as well as kind of our sh what we call our shaper tags You know, like he's good damage. He's really durable. He's good initiator blah 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 uh, as well as all the base values that they have and their base value scaling. So it's like you, you'll be able to see, you know, how does this bruiser scale compared to this bruiser? How does this mage uh, scale compared to this mage? Um, so this is all really nice to have uh, presented to the front end, uh, to all the users in the front end as well. And then finally, actually, although all this stuff is great, <laughs> this <laughs> the lore bits, but... But, but wait, there's no, but lore. So my favorite bit is the lore. So something we've been doing since the dawn of time is uh, the, dawn, the dawn, dawn gate of time, gate of time <laughs> is recording uh, these monologue bios for every single character. So we're gonna just listen to the first couple uh, mm -hmm. phrases, uh, first couple sentences here because it's it's kind of long, but it's nice to get a little transcript. So we're gonna go ahead and play it. I'm supposed to say something about how we don't know the spirit's will. How we'll all meet again someday in a world where things are better. <sighs> ain't a smart man. <sighs> Done things I ain't proud of. Hurt people on the say-so of others. Broke people for a few coins from bad men. Ugh. So, I'm just going to give you that little tiny uh, tiny peek. But every single character that we every have. Every uh, character. Every character. And they are 
super good. Yeah. Like I it, recently, we we even some of them have kind of like additional audio layered on top of just the talking. We I, I listened through all of them, kind of their final produced form recently, and I was just like, oh, I know it, like it's s- it's so good. I think I think the best thing about doing it this way is the fact that like you know whenever a new shaper comes out, like Basco's Knuckled came out on Friday, right? right. And you're like, oh, sweet lore, and you read it, and they're like. That was awesome. Now I have to wait three weeks until like a new shaper is released. But now it's like we're gonna give you a a spoken bio for every shaper all at once. Yeah, which there's, is awesome. There's even ones with like multiple characters in it. Like Dibs's bio has Nisa in it, <laughs> and oh God. the Ferris bio has like oh, the Ferris bio is really good. It's like I think it's my favorite. It's got multiple characters in it that are. It's really really cool. It's a really fun you know like nugget of lore for people to get yeah. into like uh, some people are like i don't want to read this huge story but like listening to this narrated by the character you're like oh yeah so hey good, it's something right? to do while you're in queue right right i think that'll be perfect it's really really nice uh really really nice addition i think people are really gonna like it uh yeah. particularly people if you really like the lore uh get in there and listen to those they're they're really great they're absolutely fantastic so uh that was a lot we had basco we got the living lore hype we had the uh the new collections hype we had the lore hype it's Everything is coming together, and yeah. uh, we're super happy. There's also the Related Collection that's coming out this patch, too, which I d- probably shouldn't click on. We shouldn't click on any of it. Uh-